Training and Division Coordinator, Bree Visser, and Immunization Health Coordinator, Denise Schoenhardt. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Welcome. We've Thanks. been talking uh, back to school stuff, and uh, we've got a whole new group of families with kindergartners, right? <laughs> so uh, what's needed for students entering kindergarten? So students, other than immunizations, they also need a hearing and vision screening okay. and a dental assessment. Okay. Special year for uh, hearing and uh, vision uh, program? Yes, it's our 75th anniversary, oh, so wow. we're super excited. So if families aren't able to get into their providers, how can they get their screening uh, before school starts? They can just give the health department a call. We oh, can great. schedule an appointment. Awesome. And hearing and vision, very important, as we know in our family. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear and I can't see. Yeah. So, so yeah, and I just saw yesterday, uh, there's some uh, evidence that um, people with uh, hearing and vision impairments, uh, that's one of the uh, precursors to uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. So it pays to make sure your hearing yeah. and vision is corrected. Denise, what should families know about uh, immunizations before uh, we go back? Yeah, so August is National Immunization Awareness Month, and so it's a good time with back to school to make sure your kids are up to date with all the required and recommended immunizations. Um, so it's, it's easiest if families check with their provider, they can come to the health department, um, and they can be assessed for, for what immun immunizations they might be behind on. Um, now, Andy and Denise, you're neighbors, right? We are yes, neighbors. Yes, we are neighbors. So are you the one getting the pool? I am. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Super exciting. Uh, very exciting stuff. <laughs> nice. It's been yeah. a long time. Well, will process. be open before the year? We're hoping. Yeah. Keep wow. our we'll keep crossed. you posted. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll keep yeah. you posted. We'll put a green flag on. <laughs> yeah. Come on down and go swimming, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious <laughs> as to what happens from, if you're not up to date on your immunizations. Yeah. Does, can a child still be in school? They can. So schools have to report on certain groups of stu students. So kindergarten students are reportable, seventh grade students are reportable, and then any student new to the district. Okay. So if they fall into that category, schools are required to report immunizations through the health department. Um, kids are required to be up to date with, with, that, with the required immunizations for school. If they're not, you know, there's a couple things they can do. They can start to get up to date, so they can go to the provider, see what they need, and start getting their immunizations. Um, there are some kids, there's very few, but who can't be vaccinated, so there might be a, a medical contraindication to a vaccine. In that case, kids would have, or parents would have the child's doctor fill out a medical waiver, okay. and they would submit that to the health department and then to the school. Um, some parents choose not to vaccinate, and that's their choice. If a parent is choosing not to vaccinate for a non-medical reason, they complete what's called a non-medical immunization waiver. Um, we have the process on our website at the health department. So there's some information they review. We want to make sure they know the signs and symptoms of the diseases. Mm -hmm. um, and then they come into the health department to sign the waiver. And with uh, COVID, we saw a lot of people suddenly not want to be vaccinated for anything. We did. Yeah. We did, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah COVID's kind of wreaked havoc on our rates. I think. I think parents are now bringing kids back up. We're catching up a little bit, so I think they're they're going to get the kids back up today. But it yeah. certainly it put us behind a little bit, yeah. Bree, does the health department only screen uh, students for vision and hearing? No, we can also screen adults okay. in our clinic. And just just make a make a call and schedule. Exactly. What happens if a kid needs glasses or hearing aids? Um, so our program just refers them to a doctor or an okay. eye doctor. So from that point, the doctors will Great. assess if they need yeah, those. Yeah. But you will, you're, you're at that point where you are able to make a determination that sends the child to the uh, doctor. Yes. But that's not it. You follow up with the families. Tell us why that follow up yeah. is so uh, important to the process. Um, so it's important to us that the children get care. We want them to see well and we want them to hear well because it's important for their learning success. Besides uh, hearing and vision, what else do you guys uh, screen children for? Mm, well, hearing, vision, we, immuni immunizations, obviously, we assess mm -hmm. for them. Um, the dental program's the, a little new, the COHA, right? Yes. Kindergarten oral, oral, health, health, oral, oral health, health assessment. assessment yeah. is new. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we have Smiles on Wheels at the health mm -hmm. department, and, and, and they do it's assessments, but they're also going into the schools. Right? Yeah, we're partnering with them for them to come and screen or assess all the oral health. 
yeah. for kindergartners this so, year. Yeah, that's a new screening this year okay. for kindergartners. So um, the, the COHA program has a collaboration with the schools to go in and do those assessments as well. Denise, are there um, any vaccines that are recommended but not required? There are, yeah. So, so we have universal recommend, recommendations and part of the recommendations would be um, Hep A is recommended but not required for school. Okay. Um, HPV for 11 and up is recommended but not required. Okay. Seasonal <coughs> flu and COVID mm -hmm. recommended but not required. Okay. Of course, we, we encourage parents to get all the recommended right. vaccines, but For certainly sure. it's a choice, yeah. yeah. What's been the uh, rate of adoption for like HPV or any vaccine that's not uh, required but it's recommended? Not, I mean, our rates for required vaccines are a little bit higher than the recommended because it's, it, it's a requirement for school and it's on parents' mind. HPV, it, it can be a struggle, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. We're kind of focusing on that in Jackson County to try and get our rates up. Yeah. Um, and we've seen some good good progress in it. but I. I want to say we're right about the, the 70, 60, 70 percent mark in Jackson County off the top of my head. How about uh, cost? Is there any cost for the uh, hearing and vision uh, screening? No, our screenings are free. Oh, wow. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, do you have uh, plans to be out at uh, any of the schools uh, any anytime soon for any of the back to school uh, kindergarten stuff? Um, no, but well, we have a schedule that will be awesome. at in all the schools. Very cool, very cool. Um, and you guys work with all the schools? Yes. There's a lot of schools. There are. Does that make it difficult? Um, you know, we're kind of a unique town with so many, so many, I think we have 26 high schools in our county and of mm -hmm. course you trickle that down to middle schools and grade mm -hmm. schools and it multiplies. And 26 and high schools in our county? I, I think there no, are. No, they're not. Yeah, there actually are. <laughs> I think if you do the math, there are. No. So. I think we go into like 76-ish buildings. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's definitely challenging to work the schedule. <laughs> hmm. Fit them all in. Well, if we had time, I'd have you name them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't know. No. I, it's I at least, it's at least 19. Oh, I don't know. Gosh. I think, we have, I think we, have we have a booth at the fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We have a booth at the fair. Very good. Yeah. Very good. How's uh, the summer gone for uh, both of you guys? Um, been a quick summer, I'm sure. It has been. Yeah, so it's always fast. Yeah. Too fast, right? Busy. <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy kind of rainy summer right now, yeah. so yeah, yeah, but looking forward to the pool. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hoping it'll be done here soon, so. All right, well, we'll watch for that green flag. Yes, we will. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, Bree Visser and Denise Schoenhardt from the Jackson County Health Department. Up next, the, uh, the superintendent of the district that Bree Visser is a cheerleading state champ at Michigan Center, Brady Cook, after this.